Let me make it clear that the banks will take care of all needs. We have provided the machinery to restore our financial system. Baltimore looks like it does explicitly and specifically because of racist housing and community development policy. Together, we cannot fail. Restrictive covenants, contract lending, redlining, subprime lending, tax sales, the war on drugs, the industrialization, all of these things are connected to why Baltimore has the level of vacancy, why it has the level of dilapidation, why it has all of these things that, you know, we come to know as blight. Blight is the condition or state of property in community when it's not being used to its fullest or its highest use for the people who live in community. In Baltimore, blight is most prevalent in a collection of neighborhoods known locally as the Black Butterfly. These sections of the city, which look like the wings of a butterfly, are predominantly black. Blight can look like a empty school building. It can look like the presence of five or six or 10 liquor stores in a neighborhood where there's no full service grocery store. It could look like a building that is uh, what we call a blue sky house, which means when you look at the top floor of the building, you can see the sky because the roof is gone. It can look like a property that is simply boarded up and not being used for whatever its zoned purpose is. This is Nika Namdi, the founder and COO of Fight Blight Be More. Her fight against blight began on Mother's Day in 2016 when she was on her way home and saw something that worried her. I noticed two children on foot and two children on bikes. They were passing a huge demolition site they put them temporary fences up for all them construction projects downtown, but yet over here, we can't get a fence. Nothing to let the children know that the site was dangerous. Namdi began an effort to document and report blight, which ultimately led to her founding Fight Blight Be More. Fight Blight Be More is an economic, environmental, and social justice initiative led by the village and informed by the data to remediate blight in Baltimore. We have four primary functions. Probably the most important thing that we do is really work with community to break down why blight exists, how it came into being, and what its true impact on community is. And so we spend a lot of time doing presentations and workshops or even taking people on what we call hood hikes to really look at and talk about and pull that thread of history through. When we look at the public health implications of blight, we find that we have three times the national average in childhood asthma. The neighborhoods with highest concentrations of blight are the neighborhoods with the lowest life expectancy. We developed a mobile app that really allows folks to go door to door, taking pictures and documenting the physical condition of the property. Then we can take all of that data and help to create a community-based analysis of the level of blight in community. When you look at all the five forms of blight, vacancy, abandonment, dilapidation, underutilization, and misutilization, our estimate is there are 100,000 properties in Baltimore that meet those five um, characteristics. Even though that Baltimore has a lot of innovation happening in different pockets, there are very few places and spaces inside the Black Butterfly to do innovation. And so we took a vacant house and a vacant lot and turned them into the Hack Hub, which is our imagination, innovation, and incubation space. And we are currently in the process of really fundraising to rebuild those two properties into a state-of-the-art facility. The Stop Oppressive Seizures Fund, our primary focus is to disrupt, dismantle, and then decolonize our philosophy surrounding real property. And in the manner of disrupting, we are working through the tax sale bailout to support homeowners who are unable for whatever reason to pay their property taxes, while we are working with other advocates to force the city and the state to abolish the tax sale as we know it. And then finally, to decolonize our idea about real property is to really move from an idea of ownership to an idea of stewardship over the land. Because the reality of it is this planet can survive without us, we can't survive without it.
Probably one of the most damaging aspects of blight is the lived experience of people in communities as it pertains to like how people socialize and how people are able to connect to one another. Because in many of these neighborhoods, you have people who are now the last person standing on the block, literally where they have lived for 50, 60, 70 years and have watched their neighbors, you know, die, move off, be arrested. And so there's a sense of loneliness. Blight, in a way, destroys the fabric, the substance, the things that make people connect or stick together. And so it's important to center community in the work and it's important to do the work as community because the reality is human beings are designed to organize to have our needs met. So a lot of times when people think about development, they're talking about real estate development. When we say development, we're talking about community development. The fight against blight is actually a fight for healthy, whole, vibrant communities.